What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and holy shit. Listen, guys, do I have some news for you all today. It turns out, just when we thought it was over, just when we thought it was done, the Gabby Petito story, the Brian Laundry story, it is not over yet. Gabby Petito's family just brought forth a lawsuit against the Laundries. They filed a lawsuit against the Dirty Laundries, and I am just now getting this news. I haven't had a chance to read up on this yet or anything. You are getting my first reaction. Let's go ahead and read through this article to find out what exactly is going on here. <sighs> Got to calm down a little bit. I am excited about this. I didn't think this was going to happen. I was wrong, guys. You can go ahead and chuck it into your Cinema Shogun was wrong bucket. I was wrong. I thought that the Petito family weren't going to um, pursue any type of, you know, legal avenues against the laundries. I thought they were just going to let it go. But no. Oh, whoa. And not only did they file a lawsuit, they're claiming that Brian Laundrie's parents knew about the Gabby Petito's murder way before, way before, you know, when her body was found. Let's just go. I'm sorry. Let's just go ahead and read into this. Gabby Petito's family filed a lawsuit against the parents of Brian Laundrie this week, accusing the Laundrie family of knowing their son murdered 22-year-old Gabby Petito and were working to help him leave the country. Oh, like I've been telling you all since the beginning of this case, it was obvious that they were working on a plan to get Brian Laundrie out of the country. Obviously, that, didn't, that plan didn't work out. It didn't come to fruition. But that was the plan all along. It was so obvious. And, you know, I even started questioning myself, like, wait, what? I guess I just got it all wrong. Maybe there was never a plan to leave the country. Maybe we were just, you know, looking into, reading into the situation too much. Maybe we were just thinking too hard about it. But no, even the Petitos say right here that they knew, that the parents knew that Brian Laundrie killed Gabby and they were going to try to help him leave the country. Petito's father, Joseph Petito, and mother, Nicole Schmidt, filed a civil lawsuit against Chris and Roberta Laundry on Thursday, March 10th, according to court documents obtained by WFLA. Shout out to them. The new documents contained several bombshell allegations that were not previously mentioned by the FBI, the lead inv investigating agency on the Petito and Laundry case. You see right here? This civil lawsuit that they filed against Chris and Roberta Laundrie, it, it has um, extra information there that wasn't released by the FBI. And these these documents, they're, um, they contain these allegations that were never mentioned by the FBI. So there's still details about this case that we have yet to find out about. And the FBI didn't let anyone know about. According to the documents, it's believed Petito died on August 27th at the hands of laundry the fbi said last month that laundry claimed responsibility for batito's death in a written journal entry that was found with his remains in sarasota county late last year while a coroner determined batito's cause of death was homicide by manual strangulation the civil lawsuit claims she also suffered blunt force injuries to the head and neck another situation that i reported to you all before that once we got a little bit more information um, from this case that it turns out that it wasn't just manual strangulation. She suffered from blunt force head trauma, all types of stuff. So he, it wasn't a spur of the moment, you know, murder of passion as he chokes her. He was beating on her. I don't want to get into the details of all of that because it really pisses me off. But in the new lawsuit, Petito's parents alleged that Laundrie told his parents what happened on or about August 28th. It is believed and therefore averred that Brian Laundry advised his parents, Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry, that he murdered Gabby Petito. The lawsuit states on that same date, Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry spoke with attorney Steve Bertolino and sent him a retainer on September 2nd, 2021. The lawsuit says Laundry sent text messages back and forth between his phone and Petito's phone after her death in an effort to hide the fact that she was deceased. The suit also specifically mentions a text 
Laundry allegedly sent Schmidt on August 27th that referred to Petito's grandfather by his first name, Stan. Petito's mother had previously said that final text message raised red flags to her because Petito never called her grandfather by his first name. The suit claims Laundry sent an additional text from Petito's phone on August 30th to Smith saying there was no service in Yosemite Park in an effort to deceive her into believing her daughter was still alive. The suit then lays out some of what happened in the days after Petito's death before an official missing person alert went out. The Petito family says there was no contact between the two families after Brian Laundry returned home to Northport alone driving Petito's van on September 1st. It, is also, it also mentions the vacation that the Laundries took to Fort DeSoto Park while Gabriel, while Gabriel Petito's family was suffering. Once the official search for Petito was underway, before her remains were found, a lawsuit says that the Laundry family refused to respond to questions from law enforcement and Petito's family. According to the document, Petito's parents also believe Laundry's parents were planning to help their son leave the United States. While Joseph Petito and Nicole Smith were desperately searching for information concerning their daughter, Christopher Laundrie and Roberto Laundrie were keeping their where the whereabouts of Brian Laundrie secret, and it is believed were making arrangements for him to leave the country. In the lawsuit, Petito and Schmidt accused the Laundrie family of acting with malice or great indifference to the rights of the Petito family. Christopher and Roberto Laundrie exhibited extreme, outrageous conduct, which constitutes behavior under the circumstances which goes beyond all possible bounds of decency and is regarded as shocking, atrocious, and utterly intoler intolerable in a civilized community, the lawsuit says. Petito and Schmidt are seeking damages of at least $100,000, according to the documents fil filed this week, stating that they suffered pain and mental anguish as a result of the willfulness and maliciousness of the laundries. And oh man, that was a mouthful. I am still trying to process what all of this means. I mean, it's obvious what this means. I'm just trying to process all of the details here. But they kind of have it pinpointed when Brian Laundrie must have let his family know that he murdered Gabby. They have the date almost like pinpointed down pat. And I am so happy right now. I am so happy right now that they filed this lawsuit because it just seems like the laundries were just going to get away with everything cut and dry. Now, of course, this isn't a legal, you know, thing against them. It's not like they're going to go to jail behind this, but damn, bring them to court something. Put them through a little bit of trouble like they've put the Batito family through. Like they put all of us through. They put all of us through so much over the time of this story. And of course, what they put the Petito family through and what they put us through is completely different. I'm not, you know, I, I understand that. But I'm just saying this family put the whole entire world in a whirlwind behind this case. And it just, it sucks so bad for me. It pissed me off so bad that at the end, they just walk up. Oh, here's Brian's body and walk off into the sunset like nothing ever happened when they were instrumental in all of this to begin with. And... Seeing it basically clarified that even the Batitos believe that they were trying to cook up a plan to get Brian Laundry out of the country. It just, it all comes together. It was blatantly obvious to, I think, most of us that that was what the plan was going to be. It was obvious that this camping trip they went on was a trip to get away from the house and try to plan things out. And it just didn't wind up working out for Brian Laundry. I think the one thing that they, um, they miscalculated was how quickly this story was going to blow up. And once this story blew up and it was getting to the point where people are like pulling up to their house and standing outside all day. And it looked like it looked like he was going to be arrested sometime soon at the very least. You know, once the heat started cranking up, I think Brian Laundry himself realized that there wasn't going to be a getaway for him. If there was a window in which Brian Laundrie could have escaped the country, it was back when 
he first got home and maybe when they were on this camping trip and stuff like that. But they didn't, there's no way in hell they ever imagined that this story was going to blow up to the level it did to where Brian Laundry is now a household name and a household face. And I don't think Brian Laundry would have made it too far because of how popular the case got. And it just got to a point where I think Brian Laundry felt cornered. He realized that, like, I can't even walk out my front door without people, you know, picketing outside and protesting outside. So he went ahead and went with plan B, which was to take himself out because he couldn't face jail. He was a coward. Not only could he not face the decision he made to kill his girlfriend, but he, he was scared of jail. That's the reality of it. Brian Laundry was scared of jail. We can sit here and, and yeah, maybe it's nice to believe that maybe he was just drowning in his own sorrows about what he did. No, he was afraid of jail. If he was drowning in his sorrows about what he did, there wouldn't have been a big trip home. There wouldn't have been these fake little vacations that him and his family took, family took to obviously plan things. It, there wouldn't be a lawyer, you know, involved. He would have offed himself in the beginning, but no. He tried, his family tried, and they tried unsuccessfully. And Brian Laundrie winded up leaving and going and doing what he did. And I mean, of course, some people still think he's alive. Also, some people think that he had help in ending himself. I'm not so convinced about that, but there's people out there that are swirling around that possibility now. I don't think that's the case, but anything is possible here. But I am happy that they filed this lawsuit. I cannot wait to examine this a little bit more, try to find out a little more details here and break it down for you all. Cause you gotta know, this isn't the last you're gonna hear from me about this. I'm gonna do some research. I'll be back with a couple more videos. And as this lawsuit plays out, I'll be here with every update because I'm gonna be sticking onto this story. And I want you all to watch. All of these channels that forgot about the Brian Laundry story, all of these channels that moved on from the Gabby Petito story and didn't talk about it anymore and didn't even update you all. When the final report from the investigation come out, now they're going to be all over this story again because now it's got eyes on it again because now it's a lawsuit. Now it's drama. I'm going to cover this story until the end. And I thought that it was the end in my last video that I made about this a couple of weeks ago, but it looks like this is going to drag out for a little bit longer. Who knows what will come out, come out of it? Will the laundries be forced to say something, be forced to speak, hopefully? And the main thing this means is that we haven't seen the last of Stevie Tutex Bertolino. So I hope you all are ready for how much drama this is going to have attached to it. Let me know your thoughts about all this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. If you would like to support this channel, I'll have my cash out below. You can donate that way or you can become a channel member. I will make a members only video talking about this for sure because I just want to talk in a more intimate setting with some of my members about this situation where I could just freely talk about anything. But I'm interested in hearing all of your thoughts. Like I said, subscribe. And as always, find some time out of your day to go watch a movie.